Hey buddy Crow back again and this is a follow-up to the uh, At Games Legends pinball video that I put up about a week ago and in that video I was just filming and I just kept filming things you know as I was kind of going through and figuring things out and here I am now about a week later I've played this thing for a little bit and I've had that video up for about a week and I got a lot of comments on that video and I thought mainly in this video what I do is respond to a lot of those comments and uh you know because there were some things like there were things that I, I had discussed I had put on on the camera and I kind of edited them out of the video just because I, I think I have like two or three hours of footage and I kind of like whittled that down to the 40 minutes that video was and in the meantime I just kind of took out things that I said that I maybe should have left in but uh, this video is just going to clear up some of that things, those things. And also, I was wanted to just cover a couple other things that I, you know, maybe had issues with in the last video. And it, maybe just a follow up to that. And we'll start with those as for, first because there's just two of those. And the first thing is the marquee light. And as you can see right now, that Legends pinball up here, that marquee light, it's no longer illuminated. I took a look in the back and I saw like way tucked up in the corner... There was an LC, LED, not LCD, LED power strip. And uh, my options were to either kind of cut the wires or put a piece of tape over it. And I wound up just putting a piece of tape over it. So it's kind of is still lit right now, but it's just being blocked out. I didn't want to cut the wires because the connector that was connecting to um, wasn't just the, speak, the, the lights. It was the speakers as well. So I didn't want to kind of, I didn't want to cut it in case I wanted to make it illuminate once again. And I couldn't disconnect it because that would have disconnected the speakers as well. So I figured, ah, I'll just put a piece of tape over it. And I, you know, I got to say after playing with, I did that almost immediately after um, <laughs> filming that video. And I got to say, I like it a lot more now that that is not illuminated. I, I don't even think it needed to be illuminated. Um, the second thing what had to do with the bring your own game streaming. I had a bunch of um, little issues with the app and um, streaming here it's, it's the part of the video where I kind of showed Neo Geo are being played as well as PlayStation as well as a little bit of pinball effects I had my laptop one of the things that, you know not related to this I said was that my uh, laptop was having issues with uh, connecting to my Wi-Fi and that's because I had upgraded my Wi-Fi to a mesh Wi-Fi using Wi-Fi 6 and the drive and it turned out the drivers on my laptop didn't support that and uh, that was uh, quite an ordeal trying to get the right drivers because I went, that laptop is like four years old. It's, I don't think it's that old. And I went to Asus's, uh, uh, well, first of all, I did like a wi regular Windows update and it didn't update it. And I went to Asus's um, website to try and find a new driver for it and they didn't have one. I wanted to go to some other site getting the driver. And once I updated the driver, bam, it was able to connect. So my issues with the Wi-Fi and that laptop have been resolved. Basically, after that, I, I really, the other thing was that I had no idea how to control. It's like, well, the mouse cursor disappeared off of that. And what I had done was I, and I actually still have it plugged in here, which I could unplug. I plugged in the dongle for the keyboard and the mouse uh, that I usually have in my laptop. And I was able to use the mouse to control the cursor. So I wasn't, um, <laughs> I wasn't totally devoid of being able to use um, the mouse or anything on this. But for some reason, I couldn't get the keyboard to work. So when it's kind of linked up like that, I could use a controller and I could use the mouse. But I, I don't think there's support for keyboard. So I would have to run over to the laptop to type things in. But also in reviewing that video and putting that video together, I was surprised I didn't show any examples uh, from when I was run running Launchbox of any arcade hardware being run that would use the vertical monitor. So right now I'm going to insert in some footage. I, I played some uh, Burger Time. I played some uh, Pac-Man Plus and I think Dodon Patchy just to, you know, try it out. And those seem to work just fine. I tried um, uh, going back to um, Pinball FX3 and I basically had both devices running on Wi-Fi and I was getting a whole lot of stuttering and, and drops and everything. And I don't know if it would work better if I plugged everything, hardwired everything in. And it, it's too much of a headache to do. Not only that, but um, yeah, the Pinball FX3 thing, I did get, I did make a mention that I had uh, tried to get the code for some cabinet support. And I got it for Pinball FX3. And I gotta say, I was severely disappointed by what it actually was. It's more of... Um, 
of like a do-it-yourself kind of thing. It's not even really properly implemented into the, uh, the programming itself. Uh, because what you get, you have to supply your own back box images, and then you have to manually reposition them on your second monitor. And I'm not even sure if doing the bring your own game thing on this supports the second monitor or not. I tried it. You have to literally put in a whole bunch of values to stretch and, and deform and position the the uh, both the back box image and the DMD on your second monitor. And you have to tinker with it. I could not get it to show up on the second screen here during that whole process. So I, I'm beginning to think that that whole uh, bring your own game thing only supports one monitor. Uh, but not only that, it, you know, the uh, back box for certain Williams tables, um, since it's just a static image, you know, something like Safecracker, where you've got the game board on the back glass, you can't use it anyway. So that's, that was a really disappointing that that was the cabinet feature, uh, was just the ability to use a second monitor. But, oh, for the DMV, position it yourself and supply your own images uh, I got it working on my main computer, but I was severely disappointed with it. Uh, not only that, but using it over Wi-Fi, it was severely stuttering. It's, it was not really usable at all. Uh, Might have been better if it was hardwired in. But not only that, but I had an issue remapping the sides and stuff. I could use all four just fine for flippers, but the way that uh, Pinball FX does it is you don't have, with a controller, you you can only cycle through a few options. You can't, you know, say, I want this button to do this and this button to do that. Um, so I was limited, and the best I could do is, what's weird is you have the two buttons on the side here, and on one, the flipper would be on one, and on the other side, it would be the opposite one. So you'd kind of have to zigzag if that made any sense between the, um, they kind of crossed over, as it were. <laughs> I don't know how other way to put it. Um, so I and I couldn't find any other option to make it work, you know, the right way. It really didn't make any sense. So um, I'm probably going to stay away from playing Pinball FX on this thing. It's too much of a hassle at the moment. Now there may be a few updates or whatnot that will fix certain things, or maybe I could utilize a second monitor for for the bring your own uh, game type of deal. I think that kind of stuff is in the works, but. Um, but I think that's all I wanted to talk about. Let's get to some of the questions here. Questions, what? questions, questions. I oh. need answers, answers, oh. answers. Oh. And some of these questions I may have already answered in the intro here. Uh, but Eric, uh, PH 1977 asks, did you mention the price? And I think that was one of those things I cut out. Uh, I don't know how much the price is going to be in store. But what I paid for this was $599 plus $100 shipping. Uh, so $700 total uh, after ever, all, uh, all said and done. I may have had to pay taxes into that as well. So uh, so it may have been even closer to $800 um, once you add in the Illinois state tax. So, um, so yeah, you know, pricey and $100 shipping. If you were to go buy this at, like, I think they're even going to have these at Costco at some point. But as far as I understood, the Costco version would just cost $100 more anyway. Uh, next question or comment. Noah Styes asked, will you be getting Attack from Mars game from Arcade 1-Up? And despite the fact that this doesn't seem to really work well with Pinball Fix 3 at the moment, I'm not really planning on getting any of those Arcade 1-Up pinball machines. Um, I got this instead of that, rather, because that's another $600 and you're limited to 10 tables, and I don't know if there's any ability to add more to it. So, um, so yeah, that's, uh, that's really a no for me on that. Uh, next question was from Ferbs. Uh, if you ever get Pinball... If, okay, the next couple of these are Pinball FX3 related, so I'll kind of go by these quickly. If you ever get Pinball FX on Steam Run correctly, a follow-up video would be great. I'm very interested about this feature. I don't think you'd be uh, impressed by it at the moment. <laughs> um, you know, after all of everything I said, uh, it's it's too much of a hassle. If you're interested in the Pinball FX3 stuff, uh, maybe build your own. Um, like, I think somebody else asked if I replace the internals of this. 
No, no, I don't think so. Not for a long time, anyway. Unless this thing became not supported anymore in any way. But I'm really happy with what I have on it at the moment. Uh, and, um, and you know, like I said, I, well, I didn't say. I meant to say at the beginning. But I would just jump on this for 15 or 30 minutes and just play a simple uh, EM or solid state uh, Zacharia table. And I've been getting a lot of enjoyment out of it just doing that. Uh, next up, we got um, Al Ho says... Will you show a video of Zen's Pinball FX3 in cabinet mode once if you get the code from Zen? Also, do you plan to use uh, VPX? So, oh yeah, that was the other thing. I think Visual Pinball does work on this. That, that was something I forgot to test, but I'm pretty sure that VPX will work just fine. Um, it's just a Pinball FX3 with the limited controls. Um, but yeah, I've never been really too into Visual Pinball, but with the streaming and if you get it hardwired and everything to, to remove all the uh, lag and stuttering that I was having over Wi-Fi, I think it should just work just fine. Next up, uh, Jason Mann asks, would like to see more of a deep dive using Pinball FX3. If that works better, would be enough to get this. Now, again, I don't think that if you want Pinball FX3 on this, this may be not the device for you. Uh, again, you're going to miss out on the haptics if you're really only interested in those Williams table, the arcade one op table, uh, machine table, virtual pin, maybe the way to go. Or if you want to spend a bunch of extra money, um, maybe build your own virtual pin cab. Uh, next up, we got uh, Tr Thomas Grillo. Thanks for the video. If I get this table, I'd really, um, I'd really have to replace that back box monitor. It's just too small for my vision. At least it can be stretched. And maybe that'll make some of the scores more readable to a point. And I gotta say, yeah, I thought, I thought that that monitor might be too small. But in reality, after playing it, you're not all that far away from it. I mean, look at this. Like, I'm sitting at the top here and I can almost reach it at this point. I can almost reach it and touch it. So despite it looking kind of small on the screen there, it's perfectly readable. I would not stretch it. Um... I think it makes it look terrible, and I actually think that it would stretch the scores out and make them more unreadable, stretched out. Um, I was thinking, like, oh, if I got this, maybe I'd have to, oh, put in a bigger monitor or something like that in the back box. But you know what? Honestly, it's just fine the way it is, and I don't think I'd like, I'd want to touch it unless there was a super, super simple mod to do, which I don't think there is at the moment, or will be at the moment. Um, he also asked Thomas Grillo, uh, I turn off the haptics for the Farsight tables till they fix the haptics problems where it's punching too hard. I'm afraid that might burn out your solenoids. And I know that this was um, addressed in your comment, but there are not solenoids in here. Basically, it is like a sound. I don't know the exact term for it, but it's basically just a speaker shooting out um, the sound to make it vibrate. Uh, and it's just too loud. And what was funny is that I found out after doing a little bit of research after I made the video was that the haptics on the Farsight tables were just fine. It was that firmware update that I installed that broke it. So possibly in the next firmware update that'll address the issue and those haptics will go back to normal for Farsight tables. But yeah, I think I'd almost have to turn them off. I was going to play them the way it's being played right now. All right, next question is from Scott Bomer. He says... Here's a question I have, which I think you'd be particularly particularly able to answer. How do the Zachariah tables compare to the PC counterpart? I can't tell if they're running a port of the PC versions or something custom. And I actually reached out to ask this question, but I won't actually find out the answer, the complete answer. But I think, I think that this is actually running on Android, but it's not necessarily running the Android version of Zachary Pinball. Um, I know for a fact that it is a custom version. And, and you know, point of fact, it has to be a custom version because we don't have all those different options like um, number of balls and um, backgrounds or whatnot. Um, this is definitely custom to this machine for those Zachary tables. So uh, I think that actually answers your question. Um, and our last question comes from 123 Hellstorm. I don't know if it's a question or not, but uh, there's there was another YouTube. I think it was P-Dubs Arcade Loft. Yep. Uh, updated his Legends Pinball, and it now has unsynced the sound and flippers from the haptic feedbacks, too. The update messed it up. 
now you have to wait and hope that at, at games comes out with an update to fix it which is possible since you could connect um the internet just the question is when and that basically is just um going back on what i had answered before and it's yeah it was the update that fixed it and yeah i'm familiar with p dubs arcade loft i do watch him occasionally um always interesting to see what he puts out maybe i'll put a link to his channel in the description below but um that's gonna cover it for now that's basically everything under the cover on this thing i don't know if i'll do additional videos on this unless something really 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 interesting uh comes out and maybe i'll make a quick video on it but yeah, go ahead, leave your uh, comments or more questions. Maybe I can do a follow-up again if you guys have more questions. Uh, but I will answer your questions in the comment regardless, uh, make another video or not. But um, until then, I think that'll, that'll cover it for now. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you all next time.